use this lesson to teach you how to navigate the workspace in Adobe Edge Animate, then how to create and start a new composition. All this is important to know before you ever begin to add animation to a composition. In other words, this lesson contains the building blocks you need to begin to start using Adobe Edge Animate successfully. We'll discuss how to create and save a composition, navigate the Edge Animate workspace, work with the stage, add and edit elements on the stage, add text, overlap elements, and hide elements and lock them in place. In Adobe Edge Animate, files that you create and save are called compositions. To create a new composition, click the Create New button in the Welcome screen. If you already have a composition open and want to create a new one, you can also go to File, New. Once you create the composition, you can go ahead and save it. Even though there's nothing added to it at this time, it helps to start saving it right away, and then regularly as you work on the file. The default name of a new composition is untitled1.html. To save it with this name, go to File, Save. It will save it as the default name and at the default location. If you want to change the name as well as the location where the file will be saved, go to File, Save As. Navigate to the location where you want to save the file in the Save As dialog box. Type a file name in the File Name field and then click the Save button. The workspace contains command menus at the top of the screen. These command menus contain tools and commands that you can access as you use the program. For example, the window command menu contains different panels that you can have displayed in the workspace. Those with a check mark beside them are currently displayed. You can also use the window command menu to create new workspaces. You may want different workspaces to display different panels. For example, you may want a specific workspace for when you create banner ads. Below the command menus, you'll find the Tools panel. As you can see, there are Shape, Text, Pan, and Zoom tools found in the Tools panel. These are tools that might be recognizable if you've used Adobe programs regularly in the past. On the left side of the window is the Properties panel. As the name implies, this is where you'll edit the properties of a composition. The Timeline panel is located at the bottom of the window. We'll work with the Timeline panel frequently when creating motion. Toward the right side of the screen is the Elements panel. It's located to the left of the Lessons panel. The Lessons panel contains the in-app tutorials we learned about in the last lesson. We won't need these in this course. To hide the panel, go to Window Lessons. Click on Lessons to remove the check mark and hide the panel. The Library panel is located below the Elements panel. The stage is where you'll be able to view your composition as you work on it. It's located in the center of the window. Whatever is seen in the stage area is what viewers will see when they view your composition. The stage contains all the text, images, etc. that appear on the browser. You can move elements off the stage to remove them from view, or move them on the stage to move them into view. When you move elements around the stage, you can move them using the Selection tool in the Tools panel, or you can change their X and Y coordinates in the Properties panel. You can also zoom in or out of the stage. To zoom in, press Ctrl or Command Plus, and to zoom out, press Ctrl or Command minus. To view the actual size, press Ctrl or Command 1. You can also change the zoom level by going down to the bottom left side of the stage. Click the crosshairs button to the left of the zoom level to center the stage. To change the properties of the stage, go to the Properties panel. In the Properties panel, you can change the size of the stage. Remember that the size of the stage will be the size of the visual graphic that you create. The measurements will stay proportional unless you click the chain between width and height. Click on the white color chip to change the color of the stage using the color picker. Take time to experiment with the color picker to find a color that you want to use. Elements are what you add to the stage. They are the things that you will give motion or animate. An element can be a shape, but it can also be a JPEG, PNG, or other bitmap file. It can also be an SVG or vector file. We'll learn how to import these elements later in the course. For now, we're going to add a shape to the stage. To do this, go to the Tools panel and click on the Rectangle tool. Now click the background color chip. It's in gray and to the right of the Zoom tool in the Tools panel. When you click on it, you'll see the color picker. Use the color picker to select a background color for the rectangle. To the right of the background color chip, you can also add a stroke or border color if you wish. Now drag your mouse on the stage and draw a rectangle. If you look at the Elements panel, you'll see that our rectangle is listed as an element. It also shows the element is a div tag. 
It's always a good idea to name your elements. You may end up having several rectangle elements, so you'll want to be able to tell them apart. Assigning names can help you do that. To rename an element, double-click it in the Elements panel. Type the new name in and then press Enter. To move the element on the stage, click the Selection tool in the Tools panel. Click and drag to move the element. You can change the size of an element by selecting it with the Selection tool and then going to the Properties panel. You can change the height and width of the element just as you change the height and width of the stage. To add text to the stage, we'll use the Text tool located in the Tools panel. To add text to the stage, click with the Text tool to add an insertion point. You'll then see the Text Editing panel. This is where you'll type your text. The blue square marks the insertion point where the text will appear on the stage. Start typing and the text will appear in the text editing panel as well as the insertion point. The text that you entered now appears as an element in the Elements panel, and now you can rename the element. You can also use the Properties panel to change the position of the text, the size of the text, or to add formatting. You can position elements on the stage any way that you want them. We've moved the text so that it appears on the rectangle. To move an element, remember to use the Selection tool in the Tools panel. Click and drag to reposition the element. Now by going to the Elements panel, we can decide the stacking order of the elements that are overlapped. Let's say that we want to move the text behind the rectangle. We want to do this because we're going to create animation that makes the text appear from behind it. To do this, we're going to right-click on the text element and then choose Arrange, Send Backward from the Context menu. If we look at the Timeline panel, we can see that the green rectangle element now appears above our text element. Now that we have our elements in place, it's important to discuss the lock and visibility options. Currently on the stage, we can see our rectangle. We know that there's text behind the rectangle, but we can't see it. And that's fine, because that's the way that we want it. However, it's impossible to be able to work with the text to edit it if we can't see it. To make the text visible, we're going to make the rectangle invisible by going to the Elements panel. Click on the button that looks like an eye that appears to the left of the rectangle element. This will hide the rectangle so you can see the text. When you're finished editing the text, you can make the rectangle visible again. If you want to lock an element in place so that it can't be accidentally moved, edited, or deleted, click the white dot beside the element.